12-sided stories is for mature audiences and often deals with topics that may be difficult for some listeners. Discretion is advised. In Eversink, the Office of Book Retrieval has librarian agents tasked by the Triskadine to recover overdue books and collect fees. In some cases, offenders must be neutralized by the agents for stealing important tomes. These are their stories. Hello, this is Wes Otis, and we are here with Bookhound Bounty Hunters, and I've got some wonderful players. This time, let's start with Sam. Hey, hey, everyone. I'm Sam. That's Sam with two M's. I use she, they pronouns. And tonight I am playing Tisha Valor, our fun-loving prophet who uses she, her pronouns. I am Farah Sarkaya, and I am playing Giovanna Letteratura, a church militant. Both of us are she, her. My name is Candace, also known as Candace the Magnificent. My pronouns are they, she. I am playing Leo de Silvo, also they, she. Hey, I'm Michelle, and I'm playing Katja, who has an Italian name, even though she's French. Before we start, please consider supporting the show through Patreon or on coffee.com spelled K-O-F-I. Now, on with the show. All right, so this seems like a good time for a recap. You all went over to Priest Castigna to find the Codex of Life, a book that's infused with part of Denari's power. It is her link to the living and is a very important book that somehow got stolen out of the library. You found a man named Enzo, a great grandson of the priest at the mansion. He was dealing with the body and dealing with the papers. He let you come in. He told you about the Sage Guild who had come by and offered a really large amount of money for the collection, but wants to find the will first before he allows anything to happen. You found a spirit bound in one of the rooms. There are obviously sorcery going on, which is highly illegal in Eversink because it hurts the goddess. You found his journals, which seem to speak of him trying desperately to find a way to extend his already very long life. And finally, you took a look at his funerary statue, which was this small statue that looked almost exactly like him, that according to custom, his spirit is now attached to. You have not had a time to really catalog anything in this mansion, but you decided that the best thing to do was to take Enzo with you back to the library, back to Mother Biblia, and find out what to do next. She took a look at the book and said, okay, this is great but it needs to go back to the priest and it needs to be put behind their lock and key so we are no longer responsible for it. You did a good job. So Tisha, Leo, and Giovanna all headed over to the church. Katya stayed behind, snuck upstairs to eavesdrop on Mother Biblia and Enzo. Mother Biblia wanted to speak with Enzo about something and... Katya felt like she needed to stay behind. The rest of you went to the church, met with the priest. The priest was very excited to see you. He grabbed the book and his face contorted a little bit as he realized there was something very wrong. He rushed to the church and opened the book up and found all of the pages blank. And that's where we're picking it up at the church. And he looks and he's going through each page looking for any writing. And he goes, the writing's gone. Her essence is no longer part of the book. What do you mean by her essence? She wrote this book with her power. The words were part of her divine being written on the page. All of that is gone. How did you find this? Where's Castiana? I am sorry to report that he passed away, I believe earlier today. Um, his great grand wait no I just had a thought what does that book do if someone consumed the energy of it what would it do why would anyone well I, I don't know if that's possible but it would I don't know give them eternal youth perhaps yes I mean it's the essence of the goddess what if Enzo is actually the priest <laughs> Above table, right there with you. There you go. This has been my problem. Right. <laughs> Below the table, though. 
So we're going to switch from you three right now over to Mother Biblia and Enzo. And Katya, you're outside and you hear him say, I think that went well. And she goes, you know, we only have a little time. He goes, I know. They're going to open the book. They're going to see that everything's missing. I get it. Mother Biblia replies, so you need to understand. You need to disappear. It's not going to take very long for the city to start falling into the swamp. He goes, I know. She goes, did you see all them leave? And he goes, what do you mean? So we have to be very careful. Did you see them all leave the building? Well, no, I didn't. I just came up. I was trying to ask. I mean, it's been so long that I, uh, she goes, get out of here through the window quick. I will handle them when they get back. And you hear the door open. Now you made your stealth roll, so you are hidden. And she is out and looking around and she looks towards your way and starts to walk towards you. Katya, what do you do? You're not sure if she spotted you or not. I try to sink a little deeper into the shadow that I'm already in. She gets up to the side right by you and she quickly moves her hand out. A dart comes straight for you. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So she is using warfare to hit you with this dart. Lots of feelings, Wes, especially coming off of that last conversation during break. (laughs) (laughs) Look, I'm a very old school GM. I'm here to entertain. All right. (laughs) entertain Mm. in Mm. quotation marks Mm. okay so she hits you pretty hard unless you're gonna be dodging oh i'm dodging so dodges with athletics right she has an eight oofta so you have to beat an eight to dodge this because i rolled really well okay i'm gonna put four and my ridiculous luck you're gonna spend a point of ridiculous luck yes okay so make a roll so five total. Just don't roll a one. Shh. <laughs> I rolled a five. Woo-hoo! So that's okay. an 11 <laughs> or a 10. I can't do math. That's a 10. <laughs> so the dart hits near you into the wall and she goes, I should have checked the hall first. And she draws her rapier. It is your turn to do something, Katya. What do you want to do? I disappear into the night or the day or whatever into the shadows. I'm gone. Okay, Uh, so you use your special ability. Like smoke. (laughs) She'll have to catch you later. God damn it, Wes. Yes. No. Yes. Bad Wes. No. (laughs) You chose the name. I'm a 19th level father. I have a lot of spells. (laughs) (laughs) Damn. All right. That did like Uh, 4d12. That was unnecessary. (laughs) It's funny when I'm playing with Saint, she's always like, she looks the most pain, like, (laughs) like I've mortally wounded her. So you disappear and escape out to the street. And you realize in that moment that Mother Biblia will probably turn the entire organization against you all in order to cover this up. That's why she's telling us we can hurt Brad. And that's why Brad is the the last one, Brad and whoever the other woman was, to check out the book. It wasn't them. It wasn't her. I mean, unless they're both in her pocket. Hmm. So uh, what do you want to do, Katya? Um, I want to use circuitous routes to get to the church where they are. Well, let's pick it back up at the church. Uh, You all have suddenly had this epiphany of what you think has happened. Everything comes into focus really quickly. And you realize that some major sorcery has been used in order to take the life force from this book and then give this person, the priest, immortality. Who knows? And goddess knows what else. What do you all want to do? When we refer to priest, is it priest name or father, whatever, a la Catholicism? Does it matter? It can be either. Okay. Jivan has made this exclamation and looks very seriously at the priest and says, is there any way we can reverse it, it, it put the magic back, or the, the essence? There has to be. I mean, I'm, I'm no sorcerer, but we have to find somebody that is, unfortunately. One of those rare times where... We have to rely on magic to be able to undo what magic has done. I'll have to do some some digging. Maybe there's a a church ritual or something. Maybe there's some 
I, I don't know. Am I there yet? No, you're not. Okay. I, <laughs> I'm so loaded, goddammit. <laughs> what do you know about the sages? Do the sages have any sorcery at their fingertips? Well, yes, but not publicly. When you collect books, you're going to collect books of magic at some point. And I know that Mother Biblia had her own books from different sorcerer's circles. So yes, but they were more interested in hiding information from people, keeping it out of people's hands. So I don't know what this is. I'm starting to think they have the point. Liars tell. I want to know if he knows any further information past what he's explaining right now. I think just in general, you know, above game, yeah, he has a lot more information. I think that he's trying to process all of this, just like all of you are. He's not lying about how dire this is or the fact that the essence needs to be returned to the book. He definitely feels like that. And he will also continue to say that if any part of Denari, Denari is the city. Once a year, she manifests as a person and walks the streets. And during that time, she blesses us all. This was one of her blessings. If any part of her starts to get corrupted through magic, it could mean the end of the city. I don't know how long until buildings start to fall into the water. That's how dire this is. Father, listen. Um, there are undoubtedly larger mechanisms at work. We will do uh, everything that we can to help, but it will be of utmost importance that you are able to assist us and provide us with the good word and support of the church. Do you understand? Do what you need to do, and I will give you whatever support you need. And then at that moment, Katya opens the doors and comes running in. Katya, what are you doing here? It is far worse than we could have dreamed. It's Mother Biblia. She's working with Enzo. Enzo is Castina. And now she knows I was nearby. She will send people after us. We must work quickly because if, if he leaves the city, we are all dead. We are all doomed. Katya, you are ordinarily so... Sneaky. You easily get lost in the crowd. Are you sure she saw you? Uh, I'm positive. She is a terrible person, but a good thief. I feel so betrayed. I saw her as a, a mentor to me. To us all. We. Oui. You can see Leo is like visibly distraught. Like this is a real big blow. When Giovanna said that about Enzo being the father in disguise, like all the pieces clicked into place, but this is a giant one that she just didn't see coming. Look, I, I know that this is a... Uh, can you not drink the sacrament, Ryan? <laughs> it's not. First off, I have I was raised with way more respect than to use your sacrament wine. I have my own sacrament wine right here, right here, right here. It is like padding pockets on her person. Just like pulls out a flask and passes it over to Leo. I understand the, the want to despair, but right now is the time for action. We need to find out what's going on. You need to act and, and locate them as quickly as possible and bring them here. I will do as much research as I can to find out if we can reverse this even. But I don't know how much time we have before the city starts to sink. Well, we need everyone to work on this. Can you mobilize the priests? I will get all the priests to mobilize, but I also don't want to cause panic within the city. So we're going to have to keep it, I, you know, like usually I would have the Sage Guild come in and work on this, but I feel like that would be a mistake. I don't know who all the players are. I can only trust you because you showed up with the book and have been taken just like I have. So we all have a vested interest in getting our pride back after being so badly betrayed by this wicked woman and her beautiful, beautiful, done corset. She has great taste. She does. It's, I mean, the stitching, the boning, it's all, it's all beautiful. Mm, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of my allies is the Thieves Guilds. Mm -hmm. I would like to see if I can get eyes all over the city. Well, before we get to all that, well, let's, 
I think all of you should go to a safe area, have a big ass conversation about what your next moves are. And that can be part of the next thing that we do. I will say time is a ticking. So don't get analysis paralysis. Where do you go to have this conversation? There are catacombs under this church and under all the city. Yes, but those fill up with water really fast. I have city's secrets. Would I know a safe place that we could chat? You could definitely go over to like Temple Market would be a good place because there's a lot of people there and it's really easy to kind of blend into what's going on. That's the first place that comes to mind some place that has a lot of people so that you're able to kind of not be seen. The other place would be going back to the mansion, but I don't know if you want to do that. I think if we get lost in plain sight, it will be more advantageous for us. There's a third possibility as well. Tisha was flirting and out with the merchant Frederic. Well, you you know that Frederic's married to several wives who have to follow a schedule just to see their husband. And so you have leverage against him. Just throwing that out there. I'm dying to get into that humming room because I want to know how those two things are connected, but I don't want someone finding out about our plan. <laughs> Makes sense. I'd say the mansion is my least excited. That's my. That's probably my hard no, is the mansion. So... I have a couple of things. First, I have forgotten lore. Okay. And I was like, well, I was thinking maybe I could use that to see if there was any, if I could peep any remnants of a reversal spell or the components in which to do that. Or option two, I have allies in the sorceress cabals. Okay. So there's a couple of things. With forgotten lore, that actually gives you the ability... And let's just say you all go to the market. You're at the market. You guys are having a conversation about what you're going to do. And you're telling each other what your resources are. Look, I know some people in the Cabal. I know some people in the Thieves Guild. So, Tisha, what Forgotten Lore kind of gives you the ability to do? How many points do you have in it? Just one. Just one. You can... It's it's a way for you to, to add some you know, lore to the city. Now, it can't be like a a ton, but you could say, you know, I heard this could be a possible way to reverse the spell. And then I would build upon that. So it's more lore that the players get to make up to reverse the spell. And then I would build upon that. Gotcha. And be able to kind of use it. Uh, Now, it can't be there is a wand that we can walk over there and buy 20 cents that will fix all of this. But it could be something like, oh, I know exactly. I will give this to you and see if you want to use it. If you want to use something else, it's your choice. But the afterlife book that you all found at the beginning that allows you to pull a spirit from a statue and have it possess someone, there's a possibility that that can be reversed using his funerary statue and returning the soul that he stole to the book. Now, you can use that as your forgotten lore if you want, or you can come up with something on your own. Damn, Wes. What the hell am I supposed to do with that? That's so good. How am I supposed to choose? (laughs) What the fuck? I'm over here like, could we then get that monster that's in the, it's in the fucking closet to like go into Giovanna and then she just like fucking goes ball to the wall, smashing it. (laughs) Like, that was like my first, either Giovanna or Katja. (laughs) What I was thinking, it's a spirit who's probably pretty pissed off at the person who imprisoned it which would have been the priest. Yeah. But no, I do agree that we should not just do things because they're cool. No, no, do things because they're cool. (laughs) (laughs) That's the whole point. Basically, Sam, above game, obviously, you now know what Forgotten Lore does. So if you don't use it in this instance, you can always use it in the future. Very true. You know. Okay. I like that. So all of that happens and Tisha just kind of like sits there and is wringing her hands continuously. And it's like, um, 
So, do you guys remember that book, the afterlife book, that could take a spirit and put it elsewhere, and like possess it, kind of like a, a conduit type of deal? What if I knew or knew of some people who could possibly reverse that and have it put back. I look around the, we're in the market. I look around the bustling market to try to make sure that no one is following us or listening to us when I hear how serious this suggestion is. I'm going to say because of your ridiculous luck, you spy Brad on one of the stalls not far away. He hasn't noticed you all. He's obviously there shopping, but he could bump into you at any moment. I very kind of gently nudge Katya, because I think that Katya is probably going to be the closest to who would notice. I kind of just like throw my eyes in his direction and start steering everybody the opposite way so that we can just kind of keep moving, but not pass him. Try to make myself short. So can you all give me a stealth roll? (laughs) And I will put my one point of stealth into it. Being a sexy tall lady in a big uh, thing of armor isn't always great, is it? (laughs) I don't have anything in stealth at all. Wait, is that all of us or just... Okay, cool. Give me a roll. I'm going to put two in my stealth. Okay. Very nice. I rolled a four. Seven. I'm going to let you just roll and you want to beat four. I rolled a five. Yeah, I rolled a four, so I have seven. So somehow... All of you are able to sneak by where Agent Brad is. And he's talking about, like, I don't know. These kumquats don't look very uh, fresh. Can I get the few denarii off of them? He's a fucking kumquat. (laughs) (laughs) Word. That's some real talk. That's some real talk right there. So you all sneak by him. And your usual uh, china plate night does not cause anybody to look their way and you find a little corner and Tisha you can continue on with your idea I know dated but there's a few people in the that are of the not so savory type here um I, I, I know some sorcerers and um kind of like the reason behind that you know um uh, like my feigning spells and like Tisha's like digging her foot into the ground and kind of like scratching her head and looking up around like not making eye contact with any of you very blatantly. Tisha, being someone who enjoys pleasure and people who give pleasure is not a crime. Um, y- yeah, but seeing who I do hook up with previous to it here is um i so yeah no i was in a cart accident and um i almost died and i also um lost my wife in the accident uh but when i woke up i was a little different i started having these fainting spells and i would see past present and future Sometimes all at once, sometimes in bits and pieces, sometimes in very jumbled and convoluted ways. But um, that's that's what what those are. And I just I didn't really trust anybody here to really know that. So um, since we're in the thick of it, I figured everybody should be fully aware of what we are dealing with and up against. Uh, I I appreciate your trust. I just have one question. You were married to only one person? Mon dieu! This is a valid question. I was like a, a serial monogamist for a long time. You know, losing, losing, losing the people that you love, you find ways to cope pulls out my flask opens it and takes another drug and sticks it back in my pocket the second that i hear that like this this confession that she has visions and that she is like a seer 
I immediately like reach out my hand and like put my hand on top of whichever hand Giovanna has nearing her weapon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> All valid points. <laughs> you're not correct, but you're also not incorrect. Listen, um, I think as this confession is being said, Giovanna does not pull out her sword, but... She does dagger to the face. She does step away for a moment, and you can see her hands on her temples, and just she's very tense. And there's a moment of just perhaps reflection, perhaps trying to calm <laughs> this whole situation in herself. And she turns back to Tisha and looks at her very seriously and says, I have spent my entire life fighting against things that will corrupt this city. But you have fought next to me, well, in your way, and you've brought us success. And I will not begrudge you something that was, that happened to you. I will have to come to terms with this on my own time, but I want you to know that I Nothing is going to come of this. I won't tell anyone. We are comrades. I I appreciate your trust. I think, like, at that, you see such a weight. Like, just, like, Tisha was, like, tense and kind of into herself a lot. And, like, at that admission, she kind of lets that tense out. And it's like, thank you. Um, yeah. Thank, thank you. Uh, it, so I could I could do that. Uh, yeah, I, I, I could go talk to some, some people and see if there's a, a, a way to re- reverse it. I have a suggestion in that case. I'll be quite honest. I accept you, but I'm not sure I could go with you to those places without compromising everything I stand for. However, I do have some connections in in the city. Perhaps I start to look for Enzo. Um, surely he's staying somewhere. He's bribed someone. Perhaps I can get a trace on him while you chase down that lead. And I have connections with all the eyes in the city. They could have eyes on Enzo everywhere. Okay. That that sounds... Yeah, that sounds... Sounds, sounds possible. Yeah. I don't expect anyone to come with me. I can kind of slink in and out. I know the back ways. I don't think it's wise for you to go and trust those people. I know you've trusted them in the past with your physical self, but this is uh, of the utmost secrecy. If you need someone to go with you, that's going to give a blade. Sharpen your words a bit. I am here. Okay, sounds good. And suddenly you hear, Giovanna? Is that you? I... Standing right there, just a few feet away, is Agent Brad. He goes, Kumquat? Oh, hello, Agent Brad. What are you doing here? Uh, I'm doing my shopping. Oh, lovely. What are you all doing here in this? I mean, I saw you go out into the street for a moment. Is this dark corner here for a reason? Or you got a book you're following up on? He obviously doesn't know what's going on. We're just... uh checking the prices of a local merchant that we like to frequent with uh, other in this established merchants in the area. We didn't want to take up any space in the bustling market. Those kumquats look quite delicious, though. I hope you enjoy your snack. Look, don't take any offense to the game. We all do it. We all play our own way. Some people are just better than other people at it. You'll get there. And then he starts walking away. We said nothing of the like. Enjoy being a pet. He stops. A pet to who? He turns around. The mother has many tools. You are not the biggest. (laughs) He smiles just a little bit. And he goes, for once you're witty. And I appreciate that. But I'm not the one that's trying to constantly get on her good graces, do whatever she asks. I just take whatever bounty there is and I deliver on it. Yeah, sometimes I poach a little bit. Gotta pay for stuff somehow. And you all are so slow. That's the problem with working as a group, is that it takes you so long to make decisions. To sit in dark corridors and talk about stuff. It's supposed to be a job. Who has your back? I got my own back. You don't need to worry about me. We won't. I have a question. 
as a member of this guild. I know she said that we could break legs, and I also know that she's trying to get us in trouble. However, if I punched him in the face, is that, like, not the worst thing, you know? Like, <laughs> are they gonna arrest me on sight for punching this, <laughs> this dude in the face? <laughs> Well, I mean, not with Tisha there and her connections to the watch. She could probably uh, smooth it over. But as a neutral GM, I will say I can't tell you whether or not it's going to be a problem. If you do it, I have a quip. (laughs) I lean over to Leo and I say, I am not sure he knows what is going on. I think he is nothing more than a puppy. I agree. We. I think he is just a bounty hunter. He does not know. How embarrassing for him. We might be able to use this. Hmm. Oh, Katja. You never cease to surprise me, my friend. I size him up. I'm upset. I want to say something, but I can see that Giovanna's like already kind of like feeling out the situation. So I just kind of like look at him. He is no slouch. He would be a good opponent in any situation, which makes because... His confidence is backed up by the fact that he has, he's stealthy. Now, if Giovanna is able to punch him, she will do damage, uh, definitely, or grab him, then he's fucked because he's not nearly as strong as she is. He is definitely the stealthy type. Did he come at all into the alleyway or is he still kind of in the... Oh, no. He's yeah, that's he's outside. Thinking. Yeah, he's outside. He also knows that you hate him, so he's not... Yeah, no, that's fair. That's absolutely... That's absolutely fair. So I step close so that I am looking down at him, because I assume he's shorter than me, because of course he's shorter than me. It would be terrible if he wasn't. (laughs) Go for it. (laughs) He could be... He could be tall. No, no, he's... He's probably like six foot, and you're like six four, or whatever, so you're taller, yeah. And I look down at him, and I just, like... Beautiful posture, because noble heritage, whatever. And I say, you know, you're right. It would be much faster if we went it alone. And I really want to punch you in the face right now. But we have things to do, and you're in my way. Now, shoo, along with you. Enjoy your kumquats. While she's talking to him, I swoop around behind him and bend down so that as soon as he steps backwards, he falls over. All right, that's a stealth roll. <laughs> I'm only going to put one into this because, you know, it's silly. (laughs) But it's worth it. (laughs) Totally. Give me a roll. Okay, I rolled a three. I had put one into it, so that's a four. All right. He trips backwards and he uh, straightened himself up and looks very angry. And he goes, until next time, and disappears in the crowd very quickly. Watch your back, Brad. (laughs) Then, all of a sudden, the entire city shakes violently. People start to scream and panic, and you see a building off in the distance start to slowly go down, and there's a big plume of dust and water, and then it all stops. And this is a great place to stop this episode. Oh, I knew you were going to fucking do that. Wes. Wes, monster. I was sitting over here really? and I'm writing it and I was like, the speech is slowing. Mm-hmm. He's going to say it. He's going to say go. it. Listen yep, to him. He slipped end. into the ending voice. He's going to fuck all of us up. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you so much for playing. I really appreciate it. Had a lot of fun. And uh, thank you to the audience for listening. Let's find out where we can find all of these wonderful people. This time, let's start with Farah. I have been Farah Sarkaya, and you can find me at Farah Kaya on all the social medias. And you can also find me over at Crossroad Games, where we are doing some super spooky things right now, I think. Probably. Hello, I have been Candace. You can find me at that Candace girl on Twitter, at Magnificent One on Hive, or at Candace Magnificent pretty much everywhere else. I'm a variety streamer, so you can catch me on Twitch doing some video gaming, some ukulele playing, and sometimes some Lego streams. You can also find me at 12 Sided Stories over on either Monday or Tuesday, depending on when you're listening to this. And uh, you can also find me at Crossroad Games with, uh, with Farah doing some awesome stuff with the team over there. 
Hey, I'm Michelle, and you can find me on Twitter and Hive at Michulu. That's M-I-C-H-U-L-H-U. You can find my music and Wes's amazing sound effects if you subscribe to the Plate Mail Games catalog through BattleBards. Hey, hey, everyone. I'm Sam. That's Sam with two M's. I was Tisha Valor tonight. Uh, You can find me on Twitter as well as Hive at Lust for Life X. That's L-U-S-T-T-F-O-R-L-I-F-E-E-X uh, to keep up to date with all the fun and nifty stuff that I am up to on the regular day-to-day basis because who knows when anybody will actually be listening to this. So maybe stuff I'm doing right now will be on air and maybe it won't. So just find me there. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. We are talking to you from the past we have Ooh. no idea we're yeah. all about to get in our deloreans exactly <laughs> marty anyway um i have been i have been wes otis uh, your gm and i've been once again accused of several things that are just not true that hurt slay me slay me every time i hear them but because i am here diligently for you great cast and the uh, wonderful listeners i will suffer the slings and the arrows hey Wes, just make sure make sure in this part that you put some really sad violin music underneath what you're saying but like a real small violin the tiniest violin violin. so after being married for 23 years michelle knows exactly what i will do and (laughs) i can't wait to hear this this is gonna be amazing Say, uh, thank you. If you want to um, find us, go to 12. Um, if you want to find me, go to at Plate Mail Games on either Hive or Twitter. I'm on both places now. Uh, for the show, find us on our website. It's 12 Sided Stories, all spelled out, dot com. All of our links are there to our stream, which you should check out, which is usually Mondays. And we do some pretty awesome shows over there as well. Or check out our back catalog on your favorite podcast platform and join our Discord. Come say hello. Become part of the family. Tell us what's going on. Tell us what you like about the games. Tell us what games you like. And uh, finally, if you want to help out the show, definitely go to uh, Patreon or Coffee. Or head over and give us a review on your favorite platform or a shout out on whatever social media has not been burnt to the ground by a billionaire. So until next week, which it's literally going to be seven excruciating days for our cast to wait to see what happens after yet another cliffhanger, uh, you'll, you'll you'll be there. You'll be ready. So we'll see you in a week. Bye, everybody. Bye.